Don't treat me like a criminal, as I am innocent. And it was changed specifically because of the 1993-94 Michael Jackson investigation. Additionally, an arrest warrant for Mr. Jackson has been issued on multiple counts of child molestation. At this point in time, Mr. Jackson has been given an opportunity to surrender himself to the custody of the Santa Barbara Sheriff's Department within a specified period of time. If Michael Jackson's watching this right now, what's your message? Get over here and get checked in. <laughs> Jackson himself, I believe, has said that this was all done to try to ruin his new CD that was coming out or whatever it is he's doing. Like, the sheriff and I really are into that kind of music, but... 12.05 today, Michael Jackson was taken into custody. The bail amount on the warrant has been set at $3 million. Mr. Jackson has been booked uh, into the county jail. He has since been released. He has posted the bail, and he has been given an arraignment date. What was going through your mind when you're taken into a police station in handcuffs to have a mug shot taken that you know is going to be shown around the world? They did it to try and belittle me, to try and to take away my pride but I went through the whole system with them. And at the end, I, um, I wanted the public to know that I was okay, even though I was hurting. Prosecution was like a train that left the station. It was not gonna slow down. Once they decided to charge Michael Jackson, it almost appeared as if they were gonna do whatever it took to make sure this thing got to trial and that they got a conviction. The uh, felony complaint involves nine counts, uh, seven counts of 288A in violation of uh, California Penal Code, commonly known as child molestation, and two counts in violation of Penal Code Section 222 that involves administering an intoxicating liquor to a child for the purpose of committing a felony. Those are the nine counts. In addition to that, there are several special allegations that have been alleged some of which uh, the jury, well, all of which the jury will uh, have before them. Uh, and the findings could make Mr. Jackson ineligible for probation and could substantially affect the amount of time that he would spend incarcerated if the findings are found true. I can uh, tell you right now, categorically, that based upon this complaint that has been filed, that Michael Jackson is unequivocally and absolutely innocent of these charges. Michael Jackson is here in stance ready to fight. He is strong, he is defiant as well he should be, because he knows and I know that these charges are completely and wholly unfounded. He's not running, he's not hiding, he came back immediately when informed about these charges, that these charges not only are categorically untrue, but they're driven, driven by two things, money, and revenge, and we will prove that. Thank you very much.
some of the female jurors brought that up when we were talking about it. Um, they said, now, if, as a female, if somebody pinched me on my breast, I don't think I'd remember that he pinched me 25 times, maybe 30 times, maybe six times. What's the difference? You know, if somebody was doing this to you, you wouldn't remember that. Your thoughts would be maybe to get out of there, get away from there. Well, there's no question that two young boys lied under oath to support their mother's claim that she'd been sexually abused by J.C. Penney guards. But there are many other things that we brought forward. Uh, she was arrested brought to the police station, we obtained the booking information where she said she didn't have any need for medical attention, didn't have any injuries. We also obtained the booking photos where you didn't see a bruise on her body or a hair out of place. Subsequently, her lawyer filed a lawsuit against J.C. Penney and with photographs showing bruises all over her body. Even after the first day, you knew that these people were only after money. And this was the biggest hoax in the world that they were trying to pull. They put witnesses on the stand to testify under oath the things that never happened, to things that were completely exaggerated and untrue. I personally believe this Janet Orviso um, was provoked by someone. Janet Orviso is a sick woman. But she has a track history of shaking people down. The more I looked at a, a history of welfare fraud, the more I looked at their hustling celebrities to try and get money, the more I put this package together, I have to say I was quite surprised uh, that the prosecutors pinned their hopes on these people. Sitting in court listening at all these people lie, people he's been good to and all of that, he said he couldn't believe that they were telling all these lies on him. These people must have been paid off to do a lot of this stuff. I warned him about this family. I warned him about that mother. That mother, I read from a mile away. She had an agenda from day one. Actually, that tape became very important. Most of us felt the same way, that we were looking for his demeanor. How was his body? Was he you know, moving around a lot? Was he nervous? Was he anxious? And he didn't seem to come across that of anyone, someone that had been molested. He just looked like someone that was just having fun, like being at a video arcade or something. He didn't seem nervous at all. And we felt that the police were trying to get him to say things that they wanted him to say so they could have that recorded. Bashir, hey, you know how Bashir zoomed in on, on him holding hands? Do that the same thing. It's because you know. Because, because that's what a mother and, uh, like, does with a son, does. or a father does with a son, you know? And they try to make it out to see, be something wrong and dirty. Put your facts here. The hand holding. Okay. How did that make you Oh, we're on camera? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we are? Oh, God! This, this is the outtakes of the outtakes. After viewing it several times, we felt this isn't scripted. Well, you know, the jury saw that tape, I believe, five times. So they had ample ability to decide whether she looked like she was being coerced and whether everything she said was memorized or scripted. And I think the verdict speaks for itself. Where are those people when I needed him, when I needed them, and now? Michael is there for us, there for all three of them. There was a so-called rebuttal video that was played. The video that the Arvizo family made after the allegations had surfaced in which they claimed that Michael was, you know, had, had been a father figure to, to this family. And they were really adamant about it on this video. And th this video existed. And you would have thought that just the fact that this video existed would have been enough for the district attorney to not want to prosecute this case because eventually we would have to see this video. And all of us would then have to look at this and think, what the heck is going on here? Which is exactly what happened.
There was a lynch mob mentality in Santa Maria that extended not only to the police and to the district attorney, but maybe to the media as well. And I remember when we were standing in line to get our press credentials, one of the reporters, a woman who's a very popular reporter in, in America, pulled herself out of the line. And she said, is there anybody standing in this line besides J. Randy Tarabarelli who does not believe that Michael Jackson is guilty? What had upset me is they were reporting everything that, that was said about Michael but they wasn't reporting anything in his defense. It looked like a feeding frenzy to me. The media were just out to see the world's greatest known celebrity fall to destruction. That's where they thought their ratings in the future would come from, and for me, it was really a disgrace. During the trial, Diane Diamond was the worst person in the world. Nice to meet you. Your hands are very cold. I didn't say what you thought I said. I don't understand how these people can run out and lie. They don't even get a chance to find out the truth. Because the uh, accuser himself is going to testify that a lot of the time he was drunk, frankly, just drunk, 12 and 13 years old, a recovering cancer patient with only one kidney, but drinking a lot of alcohol. And, and he told the grand jury that there were just things he didn't remember. He seemed to remember three other instances of abuse, but he couldn't really pull it out of, the, of his head. He said it was like a dream. Tom Mesro would get there and show it, clean it up and show that this is not true. This is really how it went but they wouldn't report that. And that went on for months. When we finally got to see what was being alleged, it just seemed so ridiculous and so far-fetched that I remember one reporter from CNN uh, came over to me after the, after the day that the mother testified, Janet Arvizo, and he said, I feel so used. give the public the impression that Michael Jackson was guilty in 2005 when in fact a jury of 12 people found the man to be completely innocent. You know the interest of the media in slanting any story is very simple. It's ratings and we as a public feed that. We are very interested in anybody's dirt, anybody's dirty laundry. Um, if there are allegations to be made, it doesn't matter if they're true or not, they'll be thrown out there by the media and it can ruin a person's career. So this is something that's become prevalent. It's a huge problem in our society. We do uh, listen to media reports as if they are gospel. In fact, media reports are not gospel. In fact, they are um, very much driven by a rating system that includes what can we report that is dirty and gritty and nasty. And that's what happened to Michael Jackson in the 2005 trial, and nobody bothered to correct it when the man was exonerated 14 times in a Santa Maria courthouse. I will say that I am particularly upset by the handling of this mass matter by the incredible, terrible mass media. At every opportunity, the media has dissected and manipulated these allegations to reach their own conclusions.